and welcome to this new series of mine called The New Newspeak. After a bit of thinking, I began to realize that the topic of language and ideology, particularly dogmatic ideology, is one deserving of a greater in-depth analysis. I hope to accomplish a batch of videos on this subject to help give some insight on my thought process and why I think to talk about this matters. So let's get right into it. When one thinks of language, we often envision communication between individuals as its sole purpose. This is in fact not entirely correct. For example, have you ever thought about a situation or problem in your head? Of course you have. We all have. But how did you think about it? You almost certainly had a conversation in your head as you attempted to locate the best answer to whatever issue you were exploring. Now it's well understood that manipulative language in the hands of a person can be used effectively against others, and even ourselves, but it can also be used to work against our own thinking process by a fuscuating reality if we adopt such manipulative language into our own internal vocabulary. Now, you've likely noticed the title of this video, and that's because it's the topic of focus for the subject of linguistic manipulation, which is buzzwords. I feel it is imperative to first define what a buzzword actually is so that we don't start involving words and ideas that are not actually buzzwords. To accomplish this, I'll be using the Oxford Dictionary's definition, which goes as follows. A word or phrase, often an item of jargon, that is fashionable at a particular time or in a particular context. You'll notice the reference to jargon, which is likely the most important important word in the entire definition concerning our subject. Jargon, in brief explanation, is a, often a contextually reliant word and meaning, as it usually involves words that have a particular meaning in a certain field or activity, activity in which the definition digresses heavily from its general, non-specialized one. A good example of this is the word racism which defines as the following, prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. However, talk to anyone currently endorsing and practicing the ideas of cultural Marxism, and you'll get something along the lines of power plus privilege discriminating against one based on race. Under this new definition, one cannot be racist if they lack power, or privilege, which, funnily enough, are determined by one's race. However, this new definition still managed to keep the connotations that were linked to the original definition of racism, such as disgust, disapproval, etc., but have removed them from certain groups now no longer included in the new definition. On top of that, these groups now no longer have a word to define discrimination against them as one can no longer use the word racism to identify discrimination against them by race. Now let's go back to the primary topic at hand. It's evident that when we change, or rather co-opt, a word, generally the onslaught of emotions initially tied to it remain, but are now applied differently than before. Sit back for a moment and imagine yourself in a position where you lack the words to describe, well, racism. You would still likely find it wrong, but how would you verbalize it or identify it? Or rather, let's say certain races were clearly excluded from the new definition of racism. Can you still be racist to those excluded groups? Technically, no, because they lack, by definition, the eligibility to qualify for such a word. Now, to the rational human being, treating the now excluded groups in a negative fashion would still be wrong. However, Adding in the notions of privilege and power makes such negativity seem trivial at best. Why? Well, just put, it makes any adverse action against the excluded privileged group comparable to a baby hitting a fully grown adult. Harmless. Such a judgment apparently ignores the individual, but under a collectivist mindset, this isn't much of an issue. It's this, and the swapping of word definitions for jargon meanings that can create a rather delusional reality. I guess to sum it all up, it would be fair to say that words have an enormous impact on how we think, 
and can drive one to justify and rationalize what others would be deemed incoherent and diluted. I hope this proved to be an educational use of your time. Uh, more videos on this subject should be up soon when I can find the time. I do this because I like playing with ideas and concepts, so it's really all on my own free time. You might have also noticed that I don't play ads if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, or ask for donations. There's a multitude of reasons for that, one of which being the fact that you probably have no clue who I am, but secondly because I find it has the potential to take away from the genuine nature of my work. Uh, though if you do want to support me, consider subscribing and or leaving a like, and even fit a critical feedback is welcome. I should note that in the future I might be playing ads for minds.com and a little bit of a short thing with uh, archive.org. That's more or less because I personally like those sites. I don't get paid a penny for doing that at all. Um, it's just something I openly support and really enjoy. And that leads me into my last comment here, which is you can also find my backup channel and videos in the description just in case things manage to go down the drain with this channel for some reason. Uh, thank you, and have a nice day, night, evening, whatever. Signing off.